There we go. That's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Come on, Ramsey. Let's go. Good girl. Yes. That's part of interview for her to take in and expect not to react to. Good girl. Yeah, we got a card down there. Good girl. Hey guys, Victoria here with Take the Lead um, with Miss Ruby, working on this nice e-collar heel that we talk about. Um, we wanted to take a second as part of our Leash Reactivity series to talk about threshold. Um, threshold is a really important um, thing for me to define for you because that's going to be a word I use a lot and it's a big part of your dog's reactivity. Basically the threshold, your dog's threshold is that moment from when they go from not reacting to reacting is your dog's threshold. So basically it's how much they can tolerate before they explode. Um, threshold is based off of space. And so if your dog is reactive to other dogs, it's really important that we monitor threshold. So we monitor what our dog's threshold is. If our dog's exploding, they're over threshold. If they're still staying calm, they're under threshold. And as we work together on working our dog's reactivity, we have to be very aware of our particular dog's threshold and where we are. If we're teetering on the line of crossing threshold, if we have crossed threshold and our dog's having a meltdown, or if we're staying under threshold. And that's something um, you can tell through body language. You can see when you're approaching threshold and getting close based off of the body signals that you're getting from your dog. Um, and I will be talking about those as uh, they come up as we work with other dogs with Ruby. But um, I wanted to just get that, get that bug in your ear to think about this as you work with your dog. What is your dog's threshold and when is it crossed? Um, you'll know your dog's cross threshold when they're exploding. So we all kind of know when they go from not doing anything to doing something. And that line is the threshold and it's up to us to monitor it, control it, and in the end work on creating a bigger threshold or a bigger tolerance for other dogs in their space. Hey guys, Victoria here with Take the Lead. I'm out with Ruby and um, we're actually going to be taking Ruby and doing a, a nice hopefully helpful uh, video series of leash reactivity and using the e-collar to help you improve, correct, and manage your dog's leash reactivity. Um, Ruby is six years old. You burping? She's six years old and she has been leash reactive for the majority of those six years. So um, we started training her with um, prong collar and leash and I've started introducing her to the e-collar. The big thing with the e-collar is you want to make sure that before you go out and you work your dog around other dogs, you spend time doing it in a low distraction environment. Um, what we are not doing with the e-collar is taking our dog on a walk, seeing our dog, look at a dog, and then nailing our dog on a high level correction. That is not what we're doing with the e-collar. What we are doing is using it as a communication tool. The issue we have is a lot of dogs have already been on a corrective collar, they've already been on a type of leash or uh, tool and they're used to ignoring it. They're used to fighting 
the harness. They're used to jerking around with the gentle leader. And even some dogs with a prong collar, which I use a lot, are even jerking around and um, reacting, overreacting or not stopping the behaviors with that particular collar. So the e-collar is nice because it allows us to communicate with our dog in a way they probably have never uh, communicated with before. And it also allows us to work with the dog without physically having to challenge and fight the reactivity. We can press a button, we can turn a dial and keep our cool and have a tool that gives us leverage to help us with our dog. So um, Ruby and I are going to start working on recall, which is a really important part of leash reactivity and it's a good way to introduce your dog to an e-collar. Um, what we do, we teach our dog how to turn off the pressure. So when she feels e-collar pressure, she learns how to turn it off. Um, we're working on her working level out here, uh, which is a, between a six and a seven right now. Um, how did I find her working level? Um, I put an e-collar on, slowly started to dial up and looked for a notion that she felt something. Usually that's a flick of an ear, it's a turn of the face. Um, that's that's kind of how we're finding it. Um, I also have a whole series on e-collar training. So if you'd like to um, check out that, that series on YouTube, you can get an idea of how to find a working level and then work on all your other obedience commands. Because we're not working on obedience here, we're just working on certain things that we do need to create um, create a technique that will help us with each reactivity, which is going to be recall, which is going to be a sit pretty much, and e-collar heel, which is keep, keep guiding our dog in the heel with the e-collar. But we're going to go ahead and get started. She is Nice and food motivated, which is what we want, um, because I'm going to be using food as we teach her recall. So, here we go. Alright, so at this point I actually just have her on a six foot leash. I got her on a six foot leash because I don't want her to, um, I don't want to get her to get too far quite yet. I want her to be pretty close to me. So as you can see, you know, she's still kind of checked out, so it's, which is good because now I can work on teaching her recall. Um, so to teach her recall, I'm going to take some kibble. I'm going to take some of this kibble and put it on the ground and let her kind of dig into it. Here you go. Right, yes, good girl. Good girl. Sit. Yeah. So what I'm doing is prompting her to come. Oh, you have kibble on Prompting her to come. When I say come, I'm pressing the button. When she turns around and starts coming, I release the button. And then when she gets to me, I tap the button when she, while she sits. Once she sits, I release the button. And we each lead her heel. So we'll do it back this way. Okay. Ruby, come. Yes, good girl. Good. Sit. What I want is her to start feeling pressure. Yeah. Got her fingers. Her to start feeling pressure and turn around. That's, that's the goal is that... She's doing something, she feels you call a pressure, and she learns how to turn around. Okay. Ruby, come. Yes, good girl. It's a quick, at this point, it's a pretty quick task because she is turning. Sit. Sit. Good girl. She's turning quickly with me. Um, if she were lagging a little bit longer, I would be holding the button until she turned because um, this is the early stages of e collar training. Ruby's also a very anxious dog. Ruby, come. Yes, good girl. Which leads to a lot of her reactivity. Ruby, come. Nope, Ruby, come. Good girl. Sit. Yes. Um, so e-collar training is going to be really helpful for helping us speak with her through those nerves. If any of you have ever have ever had a dog who's nervous, sit, girl. you know that that dog is pretty much in fight or flight mode and isn't always listening or paying attention to what you're doing. You have to usually pull really hard, you have to pick them up, you have to physically maneuver them because their mind is so stressed out and all over the place. So being as anxious as the dog as she is, this tool is going to be very helpful for us to make sure that we can communicate with her when there's stuff going on. We're also using food drive to try and get her more engaged in us and in her environment because she just generally comes outside, she's nervous, and then of course she sees a dog and then she really freaks out. Again. Ruby, come. Yes, good girl. Sit. Yes. So again, come button, sit button. 
Can you hear me say yes? I've got to lower the button. Okay. Good girl. Scrooby come. Yes, good girl. Right now she's finishing all the food, which is fine. Um, but I do want to teach her to recall to the sit because this is going to help me. Go, oh, sit. Yeah. So she broke sit, so pressure. She gets back, pressure comes off. Um, I want to start recalling her to a sit because that's going to help me when she's reacting to other dogs or we're stuck in a tight spot. I can get her to turn away and come and sit. I don't want her pacing. I don't want her spinning in circles. I don't want her kind of looking around behind my legs trying to see a dog. I want her to know when she comes back to me, to sit. because it allows your dog to feel like they've come a longer way, especially if you're using a, just a six foot leash, which we are right now because of reactivity. We want to be on a leash. making sure that she can stay in heel. Um, at this point, if I'm starting e-collar with a dog, I should have a pretty decent leash walk happening already um, because I put the dog on a prong collar, spent some time conditioning them, but I want them beside me, not ahead pulling around. Um, when you're dealing with reactivity, when you're dealing with reactivity, um, it is extremely important that your dog knows how to stay beside you when nothing's going on. So if your dog's leash reactive. They don't need to be on a walk like sniffing around and looking at all the bushes and stuff. The whole walk with zero dogs around because then when a dog shows up your dog's really going to lose their mind. Um, we need These guys need to see control. When they see another dog they wish we had control of the environment. But when good girl. Good girl. You can see she's nervous about the car. Yeah. Um, but these dogs they, they want to see that we have control. They want to see that we have control of the environment. We have control of this big, scary dog that's approaching them. Um, so how is our dog going to think we have any control if we can't even control them? So that's where it comes down to, again, making sure that your dog isn't pulling and sniffing, marking, barking and lunging, dragging you around on the walk. For the, most, for the majority of your walk, your dog should be walking very nicely and heel and goes to the grass, sit, goes to the grass when you say, okay that they're not just bossing their way around on the walk. So um, I also want to spend some time working on e-collar heel with my dog. Again, we're still at the working level, so that's the level that your dog tends to respond to. No big overreactions from your dog. It's just the level that your dog says, oh, I see that, and you can see that we're having a conversation that your dog acknowledges that they feel it. Um, what we're doing is just adding pressure again. When they get back into position, the pressure comes off. So I'm going to walk with her a little bit. Heel. And for the most part, her heel's pretty good. But things like that, pressure. Yes. When she gets back in the spot, button comes off. When I turn, pressure. Yes. Good girl. I'm tapping when I turn. Anytime I feel her put her face on the ground, I'm going to apply pressure. Pressure. Yes. When she gets back in the spot, the pressure comes off. When I turn, pressure. Yes. You know, it's very quick. I want, I want a lot of button work right now because I really want to know if she knows what it feels like. If she it's not a foreign sensation and what I'm in, in a sense if you think about it what we're trying to do is replace any leash pressure with e-collar pressure so we're looking to have where we would have a tight leash on a turn or a tight leash if we want our dog to sit now we apply a button pressure and they sit so we're going to replace leash pressure with e-collar pressure this is going to help you when your dog's reactive or you're approaching dogs on a leash or in a you know you're walking by somebody's house with a dog behind a fence because your dog's going to get aroused and start to get stressed. So you're gonna apply the button and help them stay in position. Let's go. It takes away that I have to physically control my dog and tighten up and yank the leash. You're doing it all with a button. Good girl. So she's in a good spot right now, so I'm gonna change my speed. Pressure, yes. I wanna change my speed because again, I wanna know that she knows how to turn it on and off. It's pretty 
easy stuff. And again, my e-collar series, oops, not in camera light. <laughs> my e-collar series covers this, covers e-collar heel, but these are really important things in the very beginning. Starting to teach recall and e-collar heel. All right, guys, we'll be in touch pretty soon with some more stuff. Talk to you soon. Bye. Let's go. Girl.